find the Zoom meeting. I was talking about um, the story of a man who Satan thought he had cut down and thought he had stopped short and um, was suspended at work for two years where a fraud he knew nothing of. But when God stepped in, they found out he knew nothing about it. He was recalled. Then they paid him all his arrear, so he didn't work for two years. Got a salary, got a raise, got two promotions. Only God could have done that. And like we said in John, is it chapter 5 or chapter 6? When he met the man at the pool of Bethesda, stepped in. The man was wobbling, corrected his errors, and healed him. And I repeat, God Almighty will step into the life of one or two or one of some of you here. And just take it up. Correct what must be corrected. Address what needs to be addressed. And sort you out. In the mighty name of Jesus. I believe this month of July. I rarely greet people happy new month. Because I see all day as the same. Is the day of the Lord he has made and each day I will rejoice and be glad in it. But I will call this month the month of performance. Amen. Where there shall be a performance. Amen. You know in Psalm 23 it says he maketh me to go through the path of righteousness for his own name's sake. So he's going to step into your situation. He will walk in there. Amen. My goodness. The man said, I had this vision. I saw the Lord open that door and it was filled with cobwebs. He's been locked for a long time. Satan locked him out. Then he was recalled, backdated, promoted, paid arrears. God will surprise you this morning. He will make a way where there is no way. Where men's strength end, he will take in and take it up in the name of Jesus. Where men are lobbying, he will lobby your case himself. Where you are to defend like the woman with the Alabaska box, he by himself will defend you. Where you are to ask and you didn't ask, he will grant that woman didn't ask for anything. He said, from this day, Carlo, where this gospel is preached, she didn't ask. She didn't plead nothing. He took it off from the beginning to the end. He will take your case from the beginning to the end in the name of Jesus. If you have any health issue, hear me clearly. This month, one or two things will happen. The Lord heal you completely. Oh, he will either send emissaries and tell you concerning your health. This is what I want you to do. If he has given instructions before, maybe they were not playing. This time they shall be playing. Clear. With understanding. And that issue will be finally put to rest once and for all and forever and ever. And as the throne of God is sure, that case will never raise its head again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Remember 
Remember, remember the Lord remembered Noah. And King Gehazi said, Oh, Zebeka said, I remember my fault today. And those that should remember will be made to remember Amen. this month. Amen. Call the name. Say, Lagbaja, it's time. Call her now. Call and give her this. It's an order from above. God will remember you. This month of July, he will remember you. Carriers of your peace, they will remember you. In the name of Jesus. I've said it. There are seven pins that carry blessings in their hands for you. Seven. God too carries. And Jacob got God's own through a battle, a wrestling match with God, which he defeated God. And in wrestling that angel, he said, let me go. Say, you're not going anywhere. Say, I have something to collect from you. You must drop something today. Say, what's your name? Jacob said, from today, you shall be called Israel. And God gave him like Peter. And when he said, who do men say that I am? He said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the... He said, my father gave you this repeater. In all your understanding and all your effort in this life, you cannot answer that question correctly. My father gave it to you and I bring you the reward from my father. He said, this day, the kingdom of God is sitting on your shoulders. The keys are now in your hands. God gave the question. God gave the answer. You will win God though. All your blessings in the hands of God. You will take them this month. You will collect them this month. You will collect them this month. In the name of Jesus. Your blessings in the hands of the great God. Jehovah the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. Release it. Father release it. Father release it oh God. In the name of Jesus. Then you have kings. And though the message is coming from God, Joseph, you shall rule over your brethren. But that blessing is in the hand of the king, Pharaoh. It's not in God's hands. Joseph, you will meet with him. When you do, what you need to say, we'll put it in your mouth. And what you need to be presented before him, we'll put it on you. And Joseph collected. What was in Pharaoh's hand for him? Any of your blessings that is in the hand of the kings, whether as politicians, government appointees, powers, great men, this month they will hand it over to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The we do in Luke 18. What was hers was in the hand of the judiciary, the magistrates. So when you stand before the king, the powers, and the magistrates, so if it's in the judiciary, then receive it this month. Amen. You know, if they just start the court and it cannot finish this month, God can say, I arrange an out of court settlement. You know that the man in charge won't sleep. No, 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 no. The other party won't sleep. He will not sleep. I remember a man like that. He said he kept seeing masquerades. He said, give me back my dredger. My dredger. My dredger. He was running. A governor was running. Ran to God. He said, come and take your dredger. I said, you collected it from me. He did because you should have called me. Am I not the one that prayed for you? You should have called. I told you, you want to give him dredger like that? You will just die. Give him a compensation. I said, Kate, de babe, ye, papa, she, be. E, papa, me, I would have told you, you will not collect that dredger. He, you know, he's the one running. You tell lie here, yeah, I won't collect it. I will not collect it all until I'm call. He said, okay, what do I give? What do I, I hey. That's how to collect it. If it's in the judiciary, you will take it this month. Amen. You will collect it this month. Amen. The judge of the earth will hand it over to you this month. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Finally, Amen. there are others. I'm only talking about four. 
Hannah, all this while, disturbing her life with Elkanah Benina, your blessings were in the hands of Eli. They were not with your husband. Neither were they with Penina. They were with Eli. Ah, it's in the hand of the prophet. Whatever it's in the hand of the prophet that is meant for you, you will get it this month. In the name of Jesus. It's a month of performance. You will get it this month. I didn't say you receive it. You will have, look, there's a difference between receive and have. I'm, I'm careful with my choice of words. You will have it this month. You will have it this month. July 2023, you will have it this month. In the name of Jesus, you will have it this month. You will have it this month. In the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> amen. 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 And amen. All right. Um, I'll be doing um, a teaching of two courses. Your meal is two courses today. There's a first course, a preamble, and then a main menu. Though we standard serve three course meal because we're not a booker. We're a proper restaurant. Bab calls the word of God food, right? It's food your spirit. We're a proper. But the place where they serve the word of God is a booker. Just one course. Put everything in one plate. Yeah, it's even four. There's even four courses now, Abby. There's, there's five. Oh, four. I know I'm aware of four. I'm not aware of five. If you are 16, then you're not. Uh, that one is not. Uh, Praise God. You know, the Bible says that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes you free from the law of sin and death. And because of that, sin and death shall not have dominion over you. Meaning, you are living in a system that has both life and death working simultaneously. So death is like rain falling, while the law of the spirit of life is like an umbrella that immunes you from the droppings of the rain. Or a sunshine and the law of the spirit of life is like an umbrella. So it's there. It's there for those who don't have the umbrella. It will fall on them. Also, the Old Testament has not been abolished. It's still in force. So when God said, if you bow to any graven image, say, do not bow to any graven image or the likeness of anything in heaven and above, he said, for God will visit that sin to the fourth generation. It's still working. And though the word of God says that in Ezekiel, is it 30, 21 or so, so the fathers have sinned and the children have been set on edge. It's still at work. The immunity of it is that you are walking in the light and you're righteous. Then it will not affect you. So the Old Testament is still in force. It's still working, which is a law of death. But it does not affect you because the Bible says that in Ezekiel 16... He says, if you are righteous, then the sins of the Father will not affect you. But if you are not righteous, it will affect you. The word of God is eternal. Your word is eternal. How much more the word of God? It's not over yet. Yeah, it has been disannulled. Disannulled for those who who have come into the covenant of grace, but it's still working in the life of the unbelievers. And they are still rolling under that yoke. So what God did is that, <clears throat> for example, he says in the Old Testament, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. In crossing into the new, he said, for you, if they slap your right, turn your left. 
So it's adjusted for you, but it's not adjusted for the unbeliever. It says, love one another, love your neighbor as yourself. Then for you, it says, as I have loved you, love you one another. As I have loved you, as you have received my love, love one another. But he says, honor thy father and thy mother that may be well with thee in the land which you live, that you may live long and live well. He didn't change that. He just crossed. And in the New Testament, he reaffirmed it again by saying, honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you. So it has not changed for you. They didn't adjust it. So what happened is that the New Old Testament was amended based on certain criteria for you. So it's the whole thing. It's in the Old Testament that says, honor your father and your mother. It's still in the New Testament. It has not changed. The one that does not enable you to move forward in life. The Bible says the ordinances that was working against you, they nailed it to the cross. They didn't let it pass. They didn't let it pass. There is generational blessing, generational curse. They didn't touch the generational blessing. It's still there. They just let everything pass. That spans to a thousand generations. The Bible says keeping his mercy for a thousand generations. That can reach a thousand generations. But for the generational curse, they kept it at ten generations. They left it at ten. Four, seven, ten. They kept it at ten. Say, bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Lord to the tenth generation. You must not. But you are born of God. You are born according to his will. You are in Christ Jesus. So you cannot be a bastard. But there are bastards. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm not going into all the details of the um, um, scriptures and everything. I'm just highlighting to let you understand that if you walk in the light, if you walk by faith, you don't need to go to any grave or any place to sort out any generational issue. The Bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light and we have fellowship one with another, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. You don't need to know about it. It's automatically cleansed. And if I bring the story of the woman with the Alabaska box of ointment and if I bring the story of Rahab, and when you look at it, their lineage should be cursed. Rahab is an international prostitute, harlot. Even in the Bible, put and the harlot Rahab. One act of light. Did you hear me? One act of light. That generation shifted into the lineage of Jesus. Did you hear me? That's how God works. They say, if you walk in the light, if you can tell that light, <coughs> operate that light, that instruction, that revelation, one step. It doesn't matter. You know, we were talking about those people who have died, and then after many years, one man marries somebody, then he wants to meet the family. They have two or three children. You've heard of it before. Those of you don't come for Bible study, you miss. Then he's going to the village to meet the family. As they're close to the house, oh, let me quickly say hello to my uncle. You get to the house. They say the person you married died 10 years ago. You've heard of it before. You've heard of it before. Somebody asks, what happens if you marry? We said that's an incarnate. It's an incarnate. We explain how they came about. If you marry such a person who's an embodiment of the kingdom of darkness, it makes no difference. Just take a step of light. One is enough. What if you are married to the queen of the coast? Take one step of light. It's over. Carry. But you are married, finger, wedding to the queen of the coast. All you need, one act of faith. You finish. 
finish. She will vaporize. And you don't need deliverance. You are not only cleared, your future is reshaped and destiny into greatness automatically. Which was what Rahab did. Which was what the woman with the Alabasca burst of ointment did. So rather than bother about generational curse, bother about walking in the light. Did you get it? Yes, amen. Yes, That's a good place to say amen again. Yes. <laughs> the other option, you can do deliverance. 40 days. 70 days and 100. They said, why don't your disciples fast? They are walking. The light is here. You don't fast when the light is here. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. So I'm here. I'm the light. I'm the revelation from above. Nothing can touch them. Nothing can harm them. While you're fasting for protection, they're advancing in the course of purpose and destiny. They don't need to fast. When I'm gone, they must extract it from the Holy Ghost. When they do, they continue. So we must do the works of Abraham. I believe he fasted, but it wasn't emphasized. What was emphasized? He believed God. Let's learn to believe God. It's better than fasting. To believe God once is better than a thousand years of fast. It's more. You achieve more with little. Did you hear me? Amen. 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 And amen. I just had to address that. We said when the last days, and it's actually getting tougher, right? We mustn't deny it, Father. It's getting tougher out there. Satan is growing wings. And um, Isaiah 66 is getting darker and darker, and gross darkness is coming. When you look at the moral decadence in the world, you know that we're approaching. I, I even said to somebody, I said, when you combine what we read of Sodom, I, and the days of Noah, did you hear me? The days of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah, and I, when you combine the three together, it has not matched. It is small to what we have on ground. You don't agree with me? As it gets worse, the Bible says the grace of God increases, right? So when last days, Faith is vast and can be expressed in so many ways. The Bible says, by faith, Abel gave. So giving can be an act of faith, like the woman with the Syrophoenician woman. Rahab didn't give anything. She didn't give. But the Bible says, by faith, Rahab saved the spies. What did she do? I don't want to emphasize what she did. She lied. <laughs> and she made it. Please, let's not go there, please. Don't ask me any questions. Let's not even go there. Because I don't know. And I'm not going to answer it. Please, let's not go there. And then you see acts like Moses, Abraham, here and there. They're all different. Then I ask myself, all this evil coming up right now, what expression of faith do I need? Is it to be given? Or is it to be, no, there's no way they said by faith he prayed. It's no, no, no. Is it to be given? Or is it to be, um, I'm trying to find it, the act of faith. Then Luke 18 makes it clear. So when the Son of Man is coming, the kind of faith that is needed for the last days to remain on top then it's a faith that does not give up. Luke 18 makes it absolutely clear. What will make someone give up? 
if there is a crisis and you apply the solution and it works, will you give up? No. It means the application on the crisis might take a toll for a man to want to give up because there is a possibility you might not get the result at the first, second, third, and fourth application. So to apply now and not get the result is not lack of faith. Because Jesus said, the kind of faith that will be needed when it's coming is the one that you will not give up. And the only reason you want to give up is that it looks like it's not working. That's why he said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. <coughs> I'm not going into details of this today. I'll come back to it. But I want to give about two or three examples of the Lord himself facing scenarios that you may wonder, is that Jesus? <laughs> Mark 5. Mark 5, I read from verse 1. Are we there? All right. And they came over to the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadarenes, when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among tombs. No man could bind him, no not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chain, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. The fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Always, night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying, curtaining himself with stones, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Verse 7. He cried with a loud voice, I need you to follow now, and said to Jesus, What have I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I paraphrase. I Command you, Jesus, in the name of your Father, the ever-living God. I'm issuing you a command. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't see it this way. Let me repeat. Verse 7. He cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, thou son of the living God? I command you, Jesus, in the name of your Father, the living God, don't disturb my life. <laughs> Why did he say that verse 8? For Jesus had said to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Meaning, Jesus saw the man. The man was charging towards Jesus. And Jesus said, you unclean spirit, I command you, come out of this man. And the unclean spirit responded to Jesus, eh, you Jesus, son of God, I command you to, in the name of your father, leave me alone. How would you take that? <laughs> Thank God it's Jesus, not Paul. He said, you know, we know Paul made a lot of mistakes. And when he said, that grace of him, we know he made a lot of mistakes. We have said, this is Jesus. He's you know, command to his demon, and the demon responding to him, telling him, I too command you. In the name of your own father. Don't worry about my life, oh. So there won't be trouble in this place today. And Jesus went further. Asked of his name. And then dismantled him and pulled him out of the man. And he was saved. So at Jesus' first command. It's not that the man didn't come out there was a response of insult. Did you hear me? Because you think you are the only one that issued a command and prayed and it looked like he didn't answer. Right? And because of that, you've given up. 
And I prayed and said, God, and do you know, three years, won't check with me. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> to let you know that God is saying it's in order. But don't give up. Don't give up. That doesn't mean that case is closed. John chapter 1. I'll read from verse um, 40. One of the two which heard John speak followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to Simon, Simon, we have found the Messiah who has been interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. When Jesus beheld Simon, he said, you are Simon, son of Jonah. From this moment, you shall be called Cephas, meaning stone. Simon means neither here nor there, shaking with the wind. He goes in the direction of the wind. If the wind goes left, he goes left. If the wind goes right, he goes right. Cephas means he does not go in the direction of the wind. He goes in the direction of God. How many times did he betray Jesus? How many times did Jesus have issues with him about being unstable? Many times. Many times. How long did it take for him to be Cephas? Sorry. From the day, you know, it was the beginning of Jesus' ministry, three and a half years. Day one, they called him Cephas. Did he behave as Cephas throughout Jesus' ministry? What was he behaving as? Simon times four. Jesus said, you are Cephas. What was he doing? He's manifesting what? Simon. Jesus is saying, oh, in fact, I, I'm not calling you Cephas again. No. In his very presence, he's manifesting Simon. Yes, he says, you are Cephas. Before him, before his face, his are you still with that understanding? At one time, call you fools. He had to call him a fool. He was still behaving like this. The final straw was with the maid. He said, I swear, before the Almighty. He didn't, he didn't say, I'm not worried. He said, I've never met this Jesus. <laughs> when he resurrected, we saw Cephas. He said, tell me who we should obey, God or man. We are ready to die. We are ready to serve God. Finally, what Jesus said three and a half years has come to pass. But it took three and a half years. So why have you given up in just one year? Why am I using Jesus' example? There's no other greater one that we can use that is perfect. Right? I don't want to use Paul or James or John. I'm using Jesus to let you know that you don't But it's looking worse. You don't back down. But it's not even like it's working. You still don't back down. Look 18. You know, when God, thank God, is even God speaking directly to Abraham. He said, I'm God. I'm the Almighty, Elohim, Creator God. I say, Abraham, I say, where are you? I say, from this day forward, you are no more Abraham. I have called you Father of men. You are now Abraham. This one is not angel, it's God speaking directly. Abby, Sarah, you are no more Sarah, you are now Sarah. Mm. What's the next thing that happened? I mean, like capture Sarah now. Abby? In the and put her in chamber. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. And everyone will say, Twilight King, <laughs> she's yours so. Ah, that woman, Sister Long. Because if you say your wife, they'll kill him. Yeah, Abby? Say, so it's your sister. Ah, sister. Ah. We've been telling that to Mary since. <laughs> Thank God for coming to our rescue. Can you imagine? She's almost 90. We've told her, bring husband. She won't hear. Bring her. Oh, she's not your wife. Eh? 
I told her to go back and look for a husband. She insisted on following me. That means I'm looking for my own wife. I'm still looking for a wife. <laughs> oh, king, she's yours. But God just spoke. And it doesn't look like God just spoke, right? It actually looked like he's failed, right? <clears throat> I know Abraham was a politician. <laughs> it was now he would be in APC, I can assure you. He would be a chieftain. <laughs> when you look at that man's life, he would be a chieftain in APC. And he would be more of government spokesman because he has a way of using language to manage crisis and handle, you know, praise God. Luke 18, from verse 1, he spake a parable unto them to this end, that meant all always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city. She came to him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. He would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. I'm not preaching this today. I'm about to close, but I'll just highlight one thing here. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry what? Day and day. Night, So it's not a one-thing decree. It's a continuous thing. It says they cry what? Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. And though he be along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? It means in the last days, Things will respond slowly to the word of God. Did you hear me? They will respond. Everything will respond to the word of God. But you know, in the beginning, when God created, in the beginning, he said, like, boom, everything appeared. They were responding instantly. But when he's coming, they'll be responding slowly. You know, when he cursed the fig tree, the Bible says the next day, he said, oh, it's dried up. No, he didn't dry up the next day. He started drying from that day. But he was responding slowly to what Jesus said. He didn't respond instantly. So he said, in the last days, when you utter utterances of faith, elements of creation will respond, but slowly, gradually, slowly. But they will respond. And if you don't have patience, you may walk away thinking it's not working, but it's working. A tree doesn't dry up until all the water dry up completely. So the waters were sucking out from the moment he spoke, let no man eat from you again. But no one saw that it was sucking out, sucking out by the next day it had sucked out completely. Then it dried up completely. So they'll be responding but slowly, but they'll be responding. And every utterance there's a response to it. They'll be responding. Now as I close, he said, Hear what the unjust judge said. I don't want to give this woman her request. But because she keeps speaking by faith, I have no choice but to give her what she wants. Then he said, shall not then God. So if you speak to God, like her brother said, what he wants to hear. He said, shall he not, he now used the word speedily, meaning this woman talking to the judge, it's taking time because he doesn't want to answer her. However, in the last days, when you talk to God, it will not be as slow as this one because he wants to answer you. There's a difference if I ask, give me this sweet, she may say, uh, you know, pastor, you know, this sweet has, she said, give me a reason why she shouldn't give me if she doesn't want to give me. You get it? And if she doesn't want to give me, eh, are you, you really need the sweet, say yes. 
Okay, I'll give you the sweet, but pastor, she you know that this sweet is taking time because she does not want to give. But if she wants to give me, I say, can I have the sweet? Oh, yes, sure, definitely. Now, Jesus is saying the elements may not be responding fast. That doesn't mean God will not respond fast. Are you, are you getting it? Say, so God will respond fast. So, in the last days, you must understand when you open your mouth, if it's going to God, it will be fast. If it's going to creation, it may be slow. He said, understand that God is not slow. He will respond speedily. But he said, even the creation that does not want to respond, will respond, though it may be slow. How much more God, who wants to respond speedily? He said, you will not have needed to cry as long as the elements. That's all what he's trying to put across. Are you getting it? <clears throat> so you may be praying for someone that says, Satan, take your dirty, fill the hands of this person right now. And we're having issues. And he's yet to take it fully. I break this, it's yet to break off. I break that, it's yet to give up. Then I'm telling somebody, all your institution, release this woman's position to her now. And they're dilly dally. Because it's not with God, it's with men. But he said, if I say God, you are the giver of maybe children. Give her a child. God said, it's time I'll send it because I want to. Those ones don't want to. So mine is faster than theirs. Am I communicating? So don't be shocked when you command institutions to go right and they are bending left. I said, no, that's not what I said you should do. I said, go right in the name of Jesus, for it is written, whatsoever I demand in the name of Jesus, he said he will do it, for the earth is the Lord, the fullness of, and, and they that dwell therein. Jesus, all things have been given to him, and I may partake of his inheritance as an executive director. I issue a command, move left. He's dragging his feet. He doesn't want to move left. Struggling, still trying to move. I said move left. I may say it 30 times. But if I say it with God, it is how I said it once. I may not say it more than 10 times. That's all he's saying. But I won't say 30 with the one that does not want to go with God. Because he said with God, you must understand the technicalities. They still cry day and night. So it's not a one thing with God. But unlike the judge who does not want to give, he said God's response is speedy, yet it comes day and night. So it's not a one thing decree. But the other judge doesn't want to give. It might be, it's a longer one. So what it means when I'm issuing decrees, maybe to Satan, I may decree 30, 40 times. When I'm decreeing with God, it may just be 12, 13 times. But it will never be like Satan because he wants to release. I will stop there. I don't want to go too much so that you can chew on this. You can chew on this. You get it. But listen to me. When Jesus prayed to the Father, he said, Father, glorify me with the glory I have heard from you. Instantly there was a voice from heaven. I have glorified thee and I will glorify you again. But when he ordered the demon to come, he said, I have to command you. What is it? What? Leave me alone. Can you see the difference? <clears throat> with the father, it was easier and faster. With the demon, it was longer. When he prayed for the blind man, he said, what do you see? He said, I see men like trees. Ah, he said, come. Okay, can see. It was twice. But with the father, once, not much, because he wants to. The people holding his eyes don't want to release it. The people holding his soul don't want to release it. The people holding your finances don't want to release it. The people holding your health don't want to release it. God wants to release everything. So with God, five, six is done. With Satan, we might have to go 25. But let me know one thing. If it's a hundred times, I'm not backing down. The Bible says, even in his utmost hatred and determination not to release, as you continue, it will give way. That's what Luke 18 is saying. Did you get it? 
I'll continue on Luke 18 next week. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So the company owing you money, they don't want to pay. Don't think they want to pay. They want to hold your money. But you will let them understand, I will get my money. And you keep saying it, I will get all I have asked of. Nothing is going to fail. But they don't want to release it. So we might have to say it 200 times. I will say it to My mouth can open 250 times. Did you hear me? It will open and keep opening. But the Bible says, even God who wants to give speedy, he hears them call him how many times? Day and night. Does that sound like once? That's the last day move. That's the last day operation. It's a multiple operation. It's not a single act. It could happen on a single act. But the Lord is saying, that's the operation of the last day. You must understand it. So if you say it one, two, ten times, it doesn't seem to be working. Don't say it's not working. By saying it's not working, you have truncated all what you have said. Don't say it's not working. Do you get it? Father, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.